Amnesia the Dark Descent is a game that needs no introduction. Crit is the first Amnesia game, it set the bar for all other horror games from that point on. And up until Amnesia the Bunker, all Amnesia games following the Dark Descent have been rather mediocre. I never thought I could sit here and go holy shit, did that really just cost me 25 euro? However, it's 2024 and I still wanted to play other horror games, and so I wanted to see how this 2011 classic can still compare to modern day horror games. So I decided to take a trip down the most popular 2011 horror game that every YouTuber was playing at the time. And while playing the game, I had a couple questions that I wanted to answer to figure out my point. Is the game still scary? Is the game any fun? Does the game still look good? And most importantly, how is it compared to other horror games currently? And for best effect, I'm playing this junk at 3 a.m. This is to make the game as scary as possible. Yes, this is biased to make the game more scary. However, it's also equally as biased against the game if you play in the middle of the day. Also, in the beginning of the game, it basically states that you should be playing the game for the experience in the world rather than just to beat the game. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, is Amnesia any fun? The answer is yes. Yes, it is fun. And it's due for many reasons, but I'll get into it. The first major reason is the survival horror aspect, the management of your tinder boxes and the lap world. See, unlike other horror games where it's just walking simulators or jump scares here and there, Amnesia takes a different approach to the horror, also having those terrifying moments that are, well, terrifying. It also adds another layer of fear because you have to do resource management on top of that. This includes managing your tinder boxes and keeping track of the fuel in your lamp. This is all in an effort to prevent going insane while playing the game, which has some major consequences if doing so. Your vision will get blurry and distorted. There's this weird scratching sound in your ears. And if you go all the way insane, you will literally pass out. Now, if you're more insane than an autistic elementary schooler, the only way you could remedy this is by solving the puzzles the game gives you. Most of the puzzles in the game are alright, but some of them I have no idea what I'm doing, so it ends up just me running around the entire castles going insane in the game and in real life. Basically, most of this game is comprised of you running around this abandoned castle, solving puzzles, all while managing your sanity and resources. On a scale 1 to 10 of how much fun this game is, I'd say it's a solid 7. I never once ended a gaming session and wished I kept on playing, but I was also rarely bored while playing the game, so I think it equals out. Now this is a pretty difficult question to answer, especially since different people find different stuff scary. However, I'm gonna try my best to find the answer regardless. In my own experience and my own play sessions, I would say that this game is indeed scary. However, I do also understand that the word scary is a pretty vague term. So when I say that this game is scary, I don't mean that this game is filled with jump scares or uncanny monsters screaming in your face. Rather, I mean that there is a deep, unsettling atmosphere while playing this game with a few moments that are just terrifying, like when you see a monster for the first time or you're getting chased. But there is one problem. While these moments are terrifying, they are few and far between. The monster that this game is so well known for only starts appearing in the later portion of the game, and they only start becoming a threat even later than that. So while this game does have terrifying moments, most of the game doesn't have them, and you will just be running around this castle in fairly well lit rooms. However, that's not exactly a bad thing. It's more like a calm before the storm type of thing, which makes the scary moments even more scary. The game also does a good job of not indulging in the horror too much, making you more desensitized to it. This is where the game mechanics line up with the horror perfectly. Since you can't look at the monster for too long, otherwise you'll go insane. And in some areas that have the monster in it, sometimes the monster will just disappear for whatever reason, making it so that the few encounters you see of the monster, you'll never get used to his presence. So back to the original point. Yes, this game is scary. It has a great atmosphere, terrifying moments, and several times I got so scared I quit out of the game because I didn't want to play. Although I'm not too surprised older games are typically more scary than the new ones anyway. I know this is supposed to be the visual section, but I'm also going to include some other stuff as well. To get started, it's probably been said a thousand times already, but this game has a timeless art style. While the graphics are impressive for 2010 standards, they actually still contend with modern day fidelity because of the game's gorgeous, 
gorgeous art style in Lightning. Even the low quality textures and models look great in this game because of it. This makes it so this game, despite being 14 years old, look really good. I don't want to talk about the story, but I do want to say that the voice acting in this game is incredible. It's usually played in notes when you pick up or scripted cutscenes where your character experiences a brain aneurysm. But just listen to this, it's so amazing. You have an ascending room. Would it take us to the inner sanctum? It will definitely take care of the vertical part of our journey. So, you have ridden an elevator before? Yes, the Colosseum at Regent's Park has one. It takes you to the gallery where you can view the panorama. Good. This ride might be a little longer. And in the other direction. I'm surprised, despite how old this game is, that it still holds up. Great voice acting, great visuals, great art style, and great lighting. Got none to complain about here. On to the next section. Finally, we're on to the final section. How does the Dark Descent hold up to modern day games? For the purpose of this video, I'll be using three games to compare. Number one, Amnesia the Bunker, because of course I'm gonna be using the newest Amnesia game to compare it to the oldest Amnesia game. Number two, the Dead Space Remake, because it's one of the most popular horror games that recently came out. And number three, the Resident Evil 4 Remake, for the same reasons as the Dead Space Remake. So the first thing to compare them to will be the horror. These games are radically different from each other, but the only thing that even puts them alike are the horror aspects, which I'll go right out and say that they're not nearly as scary as Amnesia The Dark Descent. I know this is kind of a crazy take, but let me explain. All of these games allow some type of offense against the monsters you come up against, while your only defense in The Dark Descent is hiding. I will say that the bunker is at times scarier because the beast poses a bigger and more constant threat. However, even then, the game has two guns, grenades, molotovs, and plenty of different tools and methods to get rid of the monster, while in the Dark Descent all you're allowed to do is hide or run, and you can't even look at the monster for too long. This also applies for the Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space Remake, you get so many tools and resources to defend yourself. And here's something that the other games don't have, a complete sense of isolation from the outside. In the Dark Descent, no one besides the monsters are roaming in the castle. You have no idea what's going on outside of it or where anyone else is. You also don't know what will happen after you complete your objective of killing Alexander. Any interaction with another person is in notes you read throughout the game and voice dialogue your character remembers. In Dead Space and Resident Evil 4, you communicate with other people, albeit mostly through voice comm, but there is in-person dialogue, making it so you never truly feel alone. Misha the Bunker, while definitely feeling more isolated than Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space, still does not offer the same level of isolation that the Dark Descent has. The exit is always in view, you can hear the sounds of war, you're basically next to freedom at all times. Don't get me wrong, you still feel lonely and isolated, just not nearly to the same extent as the original. All in all, Amnesia The Dark Descent is an excellent horror game. Great art style, monsters, horror, it even holds up against some of the more recent horror titles. However, I'd only recommend this game as a first time playthrough or trying it out after a few years when you don't remember anything that happens. Well that's all for this vid. I know there's more stuff I could have mentioned like the music, but I didn't got time. If you like this vid, tell me what else I should cover. Thanks for watching. Peace.